So this is kind of like uh, maybe the hull or the the front of the vessel. The Baleta spacecraft will appear to have kind of teleported itself right in the middle of the social. You'll see like vines and tentacles like uh, meandering uh, in the ceiling. These are the trunks that will be resting on the ground and the vines going upwards. These are additional tentacles that we might kind of just like weave through some more. Okay. I'm currently working on a brand new installation for The Welcome, a spectacular series of events chosen by the people of Greater Manchester, which will take place at Factory International's home, Aviva Studios, from the 11th to 19th of November, 2023. Uh, do I have to mention the name of the place? Or not really. Sulfur. Not like sulfur, but with a D. No, kidding. <laughs> Is that right? Sulfur. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's been 10 days. Uh, has it been 10 days? And it's been slowly getting colder and colder since we've arrived. We have until next week, next week here until we move on site on the 6th. Uh, so that's the exciting bit, I feel, like adjusting to the space, you know, cutting bits here, making things fit, planning things out meticulously it's not something that we do. We, we have described uh, creative work in the Philippines as being in disaster response 24 seven. There's always just like, it's, it's very guerrilla. It's like, you, know, you make things work with the means that you have. You know, if, if you're persistent enough it, with the thing that you wanna do, you'll find a way to make it happen. We are doing a series of workshops where I, get to share how I approach kind of transforming plastic bottles into the embellishments. Like these, uh, they would look like alien plant life or alien flowers that we would attach to these structures. Almost always there is a workshop component whenever I do work in a particular place. Just my way to like relate to uh, even further to the community that I'm doing work for and doing work with. I wanted to use materials that the locals were familiar with. You know, I, I, I like the humor of them recognizing a strainer in the work or like something that they use at home transformed into something completely different. You know, it's just like a personal challenge to kind of curb my own practice uh, away from uh, this this culture of uh, adding to more waste production, essentially, especially since I have uh, a tendency to make large works. We try to use every last bit of the pieces, so like the bottom parts might end up becoming like mushroom growths. I guess my approach has been associating my practice with local practices as well, like in the Philippines you'll find they hardly throw things away. Single-use plastic is not exactly, exactly single-use plastic. Our fiestas, people would decorate the entire facades of their homes with uh, their harvests for the season. Um, so these are our local and pre-colonial forms of what we would, I guess, associate with installation art. As a kid growing up in the south of the Philippines where there were no art centers, no museums, pre-internet, no art galleries. I had to be creative in sourcing out my influences for art. And these came in the form of sci-fi films, graphic novels, fantasy films. So basically I just, I was one of those kids who used drawing as a form of play and I just never stopped. It just evolved and then some aspects of it got complicated as things do when you <laughs> become an adult and live in a problematic world. Um, but yeah, it, it's still essentially trying to portray that sense of play. I built my first bamboo spaceship, I guess more than 10 years ago. I was interested in participating in this race for the future, but you know, we didn't have the sleek technology to build like your space rockets. So instead I tried to kind of create my own space vessels or uh, allusions to sci-fi world using materials that were 
uh, just easily available for me. At some point, I realized that all the sci-fi films that I was watching was done in First Worlds and didn't have our specific culture in mind. We were always left out amongst these cities that were being blown up. Hey, we want to be blown up too, you know? So it's, it's really, for me, I think the most effective way to redirect our actions, like how sci-fi has the power to direct technological innovations just by imagining it first. In that same sense, you know, um, imagining a world where nature and the, the remnants of this plastic world that we live in, how will that look like in the future? This speculative sci-fi also addresses the question of the possibility that the Philippines might end up becoming the world's trash a destination. Um, it's happened in the past that certain first world countries have been shipping in secret non-recyclable waste to the country through underground dealings with you know, certain you know, local government. Um, I won't name names, but <laughs> uh, yeah, so this, this thing happens. What would this future Philippine society look like if that does happen? How would uh, the many peoples of the Philippines adapt to this, this new ecology of trash. I've been doing balete sculptures. I mean, uh, sculptures referencing the balete tree, which is a mystical tree in Southeast Asian lore. It's actually sacred in most Asia, Southeast Asian countries, believed to be the abode of spirits. But uh, when, I guess, when the Spanish arrived back in the 1500s in the Philippines, they found ways to discourage us from worshiping nature. And now we have a complicated relationship with the baleta tree. It's now also a source of fear. It's what our grandmothers and mothers would tell us to like not go to unless we want to be cursed by some evil spirit. The moment I got to encounter much more badass mystical figures like Mebuyan, for example, which I've referred to in, in my other works. Mebuyan is a goddess of death and fertility. She is described as having breasts all over her body. She determines who lives or dies just by shaking a lime tree. If the fruit that falls is ripe, uh, the person who will die is old and has lived a ripe old age. And if the fruit that falls is young, these would be children that would die. But in their mythology, these spirits still have to undergo a journey in the afterlife, so she breastfeeds the spirits of the dead children, hence the many breasts all over her body, until they become adult spirits and have to continue on their journey. Um, yeah, just like, how badass is that? You see all these other uh, films and stories referencing their culture's uh, mythic figures and transporting them into the realm of the future. Um, yeah, so it's essentially just us participating in that, that realm.